Hello, welcome to a new video, and it's not going to be the same as my usual Maya the Source kind of videos. It's kind of be, it's kind of, it's more of a showcase of what's what's to come um, for Source Engine based games, and especially Source Filmmaker. And I kind of wanted to, to breach, you know, get on this because I want people to go out there and play with the tools now. So whenever it supports Source Filmmaker or Source Filmmaker supports it, whatever happens, you know what how to basic do a basic operation so start now start learning now instead of start learning later more or less so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the history of source and you know very you know high level view of it we're gonna do a tools preview uh how to download the tools and maybe ba uh, build a basic map and hammer now source engine one was uh, debuted in 2004 with counter-strike source this one's called source and uh, Half-Life 2 came after that, not too long after. Um, the back end of Source Engine 1 is Source SDK, and it's changed over the years, but it's still the basic, you know, old uh, Source SDK. Now, Source Maker also uses this old version of Source Engine, um, even though it's a little more up-to-date than the oldest of versions of Source Engine 1. But there are um, issues with Source Engine 1, such as it's based and built on technology from 2004 and 5. It really hasn't upgraded that well over the years. Uh, it cannot compete with Unreal Engine 4 or Unity Engine 5 because they just handle a lot more um, effects and polycon counts and lighting and everything else a lot better. Um, and there's always been a, a steep learning curve for Source, even though there's well, lots of people who make stuff now. Um, for something that has been around for 10 years, you would think to be, you know, it'd be more accessible to people. Um, so Source Engine 2 is able to handle more polygon counts and details, uh, as you'll see. And it's going to be competitive against the current iteration of the competing game engines, like what I just mentioned. And it's likely going to be showcased by Half-Life 3 when it comes out. And as you'll see here, this is a screenshot of the same more or less location in Left 4 Dead 2 in Source Engine 2 and then in Source Engine 1. And you'll see that there's better lighting, uh, better ability to handle um, particles and uh, grass and other vegetation that usually would be too much to handle as a, a polygon. Uh, you'll see there's more details on, let's say, the columns. And over here, it's just, it's, it's a night and day difference, more or less. So, if you don't know, Hammer is the map, uh, the map editor for Source Engine, and you'll use that to make maps or Source Source Filmmaker. Now, Source Filmmaker, you can obviously take the you know, the black void and build a scene build out of it, but sometimes you want to build a map actually and and have it reusable over time. It's easier to share a map than it is to share, say, a scene build. And the UI for Hammer is really old, and like I said, there's a learning curve, and it's not exactly the easiest to, to learn. And this is the old Hammer. Um, you've got some of the same tools, more or less, you'll see in Hammer 2014, but the actual interface is kind of non-intuitive uh, to a lot of people. Now, Hammer 2014 is the new hotness. The UI is more intuitive, uh, and it's currently in alpha stage and only supports Dota 2 right now, but that'll expand whenever Source 2 goes into full production and their games get updated, and especially when Source America gets updated to the Source Engine 2 compatibility. Um, but this is like a new, this is a screenshot of just a basic map I had built um, for Dota 2. I don't play Dota 2 at all, but you know, it, it shows you basically the new modern kind of dark UI theme. You've got your viewport, your other stuff there it, it's a lot cleaner to me it's a lot more intuitive uh, than the other one and it reminds me a lot of Maya in some respects that's what I'm what I'm used to so we're gonna do a tool preview and the tools available to us are the asset browser the hammer editor uh, map editor material editor model editor and particle editor and finally the console so when you first launch the alpha tools, you'll see that you have this asset browser and it'll show you basically everything you have in your libraries that it can, it can use. Um, and usually you can see a preview over there depending on what asset you've got. There's a bunch of different options to change the filters and stuff like that. You can search for uh, whatever it is. Um, 
but that's we're not going to get too much into that. So here's your hot links to your tools available. Uh, we'll start with Hammer Editor. And you start it up, it basically look, looks like this. Uh, you've got your viewport uh, holding down the your right mouse button. You can do this motion. Uh, w goes forward, S goes back, A goes left, D goes right. Uh, and you can basically navigate navigate like a flying view like this. Uh, you also have an ortho orthographic view by default. At top, you can also change this to be whatever you want. You can also change this to be something else too. So you basically have two different viewports you can change the views on. Um, by default, you have an asset browser over here. Um, you can change the tabs to materials or whatever you want. Uh, these will be all the assets that are available to you in your, your directories. So it's kind of important to make sure that you see those assets in your asset browser. Uh, object properties we'll get into in just a minute. But basically, you can go out there and see different stuff about the object, whatever it is. Um, you know, you can change the color, you can change whatever. Uh, this is your undo history, uh, just kind of like Photoshop. You can go backwards, forwards if you make a mistake. Uh, this is your selection sets. Uh, this is your tools menu over here. You've got your different options. You get your select, you get your translates, and you get your scale tool, uh, pivot tools, you know, your entity. This is where you start making things, um, your mirror tools, you know, basically your tool sets over here. This is your selection stuff. Um, so on this model that we created, you can actually make sure in your selection tool you can select a vertice. You know, you can select uh, edges, you know, or even faces. Whoops. <laughs> and if you do that, you have to go back to... So your interface is also kind of um, modifiable. Uh, you can go over here and uh, you, know, you can select what you want to see here. Uh, so you do tool properties and you missed it, or let's say you accidentally close tool properties. You can go up here to the active material, whatever this this thing is up here, and you can go and you know tool properties or whatever you're missing. So it's it's if you've got a custom way you want to do your UI, it's uh, it's customizable like that. They said you have uh, your selection sets here. You can, you know, you can select by mesh or objects or, or whatever, what have you, you know. And then here's your editing settings, your view settings, your map settings. Uh, of course, you've got your menu sets up here. Um, it's really not. It's really more intuitive, I think, than the old hammer. Especially since you can navigate like this, and there's a true perspective view and grid lines and all of this stuff. So. Um, We'll get into actually how to build a map in here, um, not too not too long. So next you have your material editor, and uh, you can create a new material. Now usually you would do this in the VMT, but you can actually do this here now um, through this, and um, you would change. You can change different aspects about it. You can add normal maps to it. Uh, and you can change what you would usually do in a VMT, you can do here now, and you can do a preview as well. Um, I mean, you've got a lot of options there. And you would just save it out whenever you're done. Now, model, model editors is kind of the same deal. Um, you can actually find, you can actually take you, you can make a new VMDL from an SMB file. So let's say uh, you don't want to compile a model really. Um, let's find, say, um, let's see, let's find a um, SMB file. Oh yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to add it to your add-on um, in here, but essentially you can take an SMD file and you can make a new VMDL, which is the, a new file format for 
this version of source, the source two, and you can actually make it a model with the SMD. So it's a lot more graphically, uh, it's a lot more graphic than uh, the old way of doing it. And you're probably gonna be compiling the old way anyway for some things, but this makes it a lot easier if you're just making like static props. I also have a particle, particle editor, uh, and you've probably seen this in Source Filmmaker, but uh, it's a little more intuitive by having its own application. Uh, you have lots of different options. I haven't played with them, but you would basically make build out your particles here. And it's the same navigation in your viewport as the hammer and WASD. And then you would be holding your right mouse button to, you know, do that. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And um, yeah, if, whenever you start playing with making particles, this is where you would do it at. And you would just save them out whenever you're done. Um, finally, you have a console. And this is where you can do your console commands. Uh, but we won't let play with that right now. So how do you download the tools? And uh, it's really not that difficult, but there are a couple things you wanna keep in mind. First of all, if it doesn't run, make sure you're running either Windows 7 or 8.1. I've had problems with running it Windows 8, 0, original Windows 8. Or if you're watching this since Windows 9, you might wanna make sure you're using an older version of Windows or the most up-to-date stuff. I don't know. Depends on when you're watching this, but essentially, make sure that you're running 8.1 or 7 right now and we'll get it from steam so so in steam you have uh you're probably familiar you can get your store and library what you'll want to do is you want to go over here to this drop down and get tools and you'll see a bunch of tools here like servers you probably have seen this before um you want to make sure you've got dota 2 tools alpha and you can just right click and install game but that you would let that download and you'd be fine. Now to launch it, you'd actually double click that. Assuming you don't already have it open. <laughs> and you'll see a, a different add-ons. You would just create a new add-on. Um, I created test and you would just launch it like that. Now the problem I had before was on Windows 8, it wouldn't get this far. It would it would break. So once you launch it, it'll show you this asset browser with your tools and whatever. So now we're going to create a basic um, map and uh, map and hammer 2014. Now this is going to be your, it's only going to work for Dota 2 and it's built for Dota 2. Um, but this will give you a general idea how to build a map in Source Filmmaker. Um, which are, not, for, not in Source Filmmaker, but kind of for if you, when you get down to it. Um, we're not going to be doing any kind of like sky light, uh, your sky maps or whatever, because in Dota 2, you don't have a sky. So there's not really an option for that that I know of at least, uh, the, these tools are alpha. So if it crashes, it crashes. If it doesn't crash, awesome. But we're just going to show you, I'm just going to show you how to build a basic thing and just walk through all the, the tools there. So, yeah, so we've launched hammer, uh, 2014 and, uh, we're going to start a new map and as you see we've got a, um, a viewport we've already talked about this kind of um, so we want to first build out a uh, tile set and to do that we'll go into um, this tool the tile editor and it'll say blah 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 blah, blah. yes we need to create a data, data to tile set And this is specific to Dota 2. Um, you could build a block for a ground plane, um, but we're not going to. Um, you can quickly uh, prototype stuff out. Doing stuff like this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just building basic shapes here. I'm painting, painting stuffs. So 
do some base geometry here. Um, we can build, say, a uh, block here. We can use the uh, Q, to, Q to move. We can use the E to uh, scale, the R to rotate. Now, if you rotate it without any, other, any kind of modifier, it'll do by 15 degrees. Um, but if you want to, like, change it kind of smoothly, like have more freedom to choose your angle, you can uh, hold down control and uh, go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, the uh, make it a little bit taller. So go to the selection tool, we'll go to faces, we'll select this face, and we can um, move it up. Now we're going to create another, um, another mesh. We'll just move it up. We're not doing diff we're not going to do anything too um, intricate here. I don't know what I'm building. <laughs> it's not really important. What's important is we. Um, Got the blocks down. Now you can go out there, you can add your models to this as well by finding your asset browser down here and you would just you know, lay it down. Uh, you got your same translation tools. We're not going to waste too much time. You can also go over here and um, do it on the map over here. So if you want to build it out on a top view, you could do that as well. Um, this is kind of a bigger map. I'm builder built. Uh, yeah. I don't know what I'm building. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically what you would do is you would do that and then like with Assigning materials, if you've got a material in here, you want to change the material to something else, say that you would just take it and drag and drop, you know. I actually kind of like the sandstone look. But yeah, that's how you would do it. Now, what you would do then is um, you want to create lighting, right? Well, first of all, we need to create entities for the game. And to do that, we have to create... I, um, good guys start, the bad guys start. So, we'll, to build a map for Dota 2, of course, since it's a game logic, not a uh, social maker kind of make movies thing, uh, you'll need a uh, info player start bad guys. And with any of these, you just select it and you just, you know, click. And then it creates this person down here. Basically, that's just showing you where the bad guys start. And the good guys start. Now, we can add lighting to this by uh, doing EMV light. EMV um, global light. And we'll just move that up. And then here's what we're going to show you how to what you know what we can do with the uh, object properties. Light scales, obviously the light amount, amount of light it's producing, and I'm going to do 2.5. Also, maybe move that up to three. 
or not. Select that. And maybe we'll add a spotlight or something. I think that's up here somewhere. Before we do that, we need to add something called game events. And what else? Let's add some explosions. Uh, what else can we add? Let's add some fire. Where are we starting at? We're starting out over here. Let's add some fire. You know, you get your basic idea. So we're gonna go ahead and build a map, F9 or file build map. And we're going to save, yes. And we'll let it build. All right, so now it's going to let you test your map in Dota 2. Um, like I said, this is Dota 2 specific right now, but whenever Sourceful Maker comes along and supports it, we can test in Sourceful Maker as well. Sometimes it hangs. Yeah, it, it is an alpha tool, so if it hangs, it hangs. So be it. Choose your hero. So, of course, since it's Dota 2, you select player start. Anti mage. So, what do you got? You got. We got our geometry built out, as you Prepare see. Prepare for battle. We built some basic topology, well, uh, environment stuff. You know, you can go over here. I go. And get your fog of war. You know, like I said, this is all Dota 2, and you would change your lighting up to be more out of my pretty way. whenever you're ready. But this is just a basic overview of what's available. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't look pretty, but it's a map. And you would just go out there and you would tinker around and learn the basics and how to make everything look good. I don't care too much about Dota. I don't play Dota. I don't play League. I don't play these kind of games. But uh, the point is, eventually you're going to build out a map that looks beautiful. Uh, and it's not going to be that horribly difficult to do. Uh, tedious maybe, but not impossible to 30 figure out. seconds to battle. So we are done with this. I have no idea how to get out of this, but uh, that's not important. All right, so um, this has been a brief overview of the new tools that are coming. I hope that if you're looking to build maps for Source Milk Filmmaker, or you're trying to build assets for uh, the you know coming up future, that this has been insight uh, insightful for you because this is what's coming uh, eventually. If you get your get yourself experienced now, when it hits full production and Source Maker actually supports it, you'll be more ready to, you know, hit the hit the ground running more or less. So, anyway, I hopefully hope this has been good and that you've enjoyed it and you learned something. If not, I'm sorry, but uh, adios.